A number of foreign banks operating on the continent of Africa have been existing either fully or partially from the market. They have, in some cases, operated for over a century. It includes banks with very long history and influence, such as Barclays and Standard Chartered, as well as new entrants, such as Atlas Mara. Many expect the issue to come up strongly next month when central bank governors from the continent meet at the annual general meeting of the Africa Development Bank. My colleague Nenequia Mensah Brampa sampled the views of experts on possible reasons for this trend and if there are any cause for concern in this report. The dominance of foreign banks dates back to the colonial era. They were the most popular, the preferred and most visible for a long time, but that has been changing in the past five years or so. Now, some of the banks withdrew completely, such as Barclays Bank, while others, such as Standard Chartered Bank, announced withdrawal from some countries while they kept the operations in Ghana and others. The likes of Credit Suisse also left the continent and kept only its South African operation, while French bank group BPCE exited its non-core businesses in some four countries on the continent as far back as 2018. New entrants such as Atlas Mara withdrew from seven African countries last year. But why will such one-time dominating banks leave a market they called home? Our checks point mainly to high cost to income ratio. Basically, if they compare how much they invest into these African markets to how much they earn, it makes little business sense to continue when they can invest and earn more in other markets outside Africa. To put it simply, they are currently not making enough economic profit from the continent. Remember, banking has become more sophisticated market economy driven and capital intensive compared to some 40 to 100 years ago. Banks now require to invest regularly in IT infrastructure. The compliance requirements have gone up and new rules are required to comply with central bank regulations. In most of these African countries, the central banks have increased the minimum capital several times. So it now requires a lot more money to operate a bank in Africa. Meanwhile, there are more players in the banking sector than previously, while the size of the economies has not grown that significantly for the many players on the market today. Capital is very mobile, looking for the best place to earn good returns. So if Africa cannot provide that, then these foreign banks will start looking elsewhere to maximize their investment. But the exit of these banks will be of concern to central banks and governments because beyond the standard that they provide, they are the most relied on for the big ticket transactions and correspondent banking, not forgetting the jobs and quality training they gave citizens.